And here we go, the hugely anticipated, heavily requested part two of Oversimplified oh, yes. Russian or the Russian Revolution. We've just taken a look at part one, so this should be pretty uh, uh, fresh in our minds. Certainly, yeah, because uh, comments went completely crazy with part one. So well, they did, and uh, as always, thank you for your lovely support, not just there, but yes. also our Patreon, all our PayPal. Um, yeah, Patreon, you can get all these early access uh, for a very small monthly fee. I'll leave a link near the That's top. Uh, so this description. one will have been up there days before. It would have been up there before. Mm. I can tell you that one now. Uh, so yeah, we don't need to add too much, so let's just go for it. Part 2. While Nicholas had been busy playing with his new best friend, tensions in Europe had been rising. It just so happened that in 1914, one Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary ah, yes. went for a drive with the top down in Sarajevo. One thing leads to another, and suddenly Russia found itself at war with half of Europe. A wave of patriotism swept through Russia. The capital was renamed to Petrograd because St. Petersburg sounded a bit too German. Oh, Even revolutionaries oh, really? were getting oh, on board. To them, World War I was a big stinky imperialist war, but they didn't want their big stinky imperialist replaced by a foreign one. So pretty much everyone wanted Russia to win. I hope Russia loses. <sighs> Geez, read the room, Lenin. <laughs> Lenin hoped Russia would lose because that would help him overthrow the Tsar. As long as he did that, who cares if Germany blows up half the country? Oof. And blow up half the country, they did. An inefficient Tsarist government meant there were shortages of just about everything you need to fight a war. <laughs> and if losing a teensy weensy war with Japan upset the people, losing a giant Wyatt war like this was much worse. Soldiers yeah. were deserting, the economy was imploding, wow. and in no time, yeah, Russia down. was starving. The peasants were getting more peasanty, the workers were getting more workery, <laughs> all the while Germany was getting more Germanery. Dimitri, we need to win this war. I need someone with they a great military happy. mind to step ah. in and take control. You're right. How about General Hickelooper? How about me? You can't run the war. Who'll be in charge you of the country run the while country, you're gone? Obviously, my German wife and a homeless wizard. Duh. Nicholas declared himself commander-in-chief and wow. went to the front lines, leaving his German wife in charge while they were fighting the Germans. It wasn't a good look. Because Alexander was so close to Rasputin, people believed that he was actually calling the shots and secretly destroying Russia, and maybe even boinking her. Yeah, well, even I reckon. Worse look. At this point, a bunch of nobles just couldn't take it anymore. Rasputin is destroying the country. We have to break his magic spell over the Tsar. But how? Hmm. He's magic. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big sassy fight. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, hey, it's Rasputin. The sexy party is running a little late, but in the meantime, why don't you try one of these totally yeah, not poison cakes? Do I don't uh, actually know what happened. Just like that. He's totally gonna know they're poisoned. Ah. Shut up! I said they're not poisoned. Dude, he just ate so much poison. How is he still alive? It must be the magic. Go with Plan B. A shot him. Is he dead? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, Boris, I told you he was the Antichrist and you didn't believe me. Can you shut up for one minute and help me roll him up? Are you sure he's dead? I don't know, but I'm supposed to be hosting a charity auction right now. Can we get this over with? I wonder if any of that... Well, it probably is yeah, true, ain't it? Yeah, story about him, yeah. Okay. Now they he's poison the murder it, of Rasputin, just like his life, and is shrouded in mystery and Ooh, speculation. Got, he probably got, got a freaky look, look at it. Yeah. He probably didn't really He's done a good job of the character. He probably didn't influence the Tsar as much as people thought. He probably wasn't secretly destroying the country. But what he definitely did do, even in his death, was ruin the Tsar's reputation. Russia's autocracy looked more outdated than ever, and the Russian people were taking notice. Come on, men. Remember what we're fighting for. <laughs> yeah, no, we're out. World War One left Russia broke, hungry, and exhausted. And with Nicholas acting as commander in chief, he was getting even more blame. For the second time, Russia was on the brink of revolution. By 1917, Russia had been fighting a war it couldn't afford for three years. They were running out of many things, most worryingly, food. On international I think, Women's um, Day, 1970, a lot of countries were going into some sort of like so poverty one, hungry yeah. that they took to the streets. And it turns out it's not just women who experience hunger, but men too. So the next day they joined in as well. Gatherings on the streets were forbidden, but I'm not sure how you'd arrest 250,000 people. <laughs> the crowds demanded an end to the war, an end to food rationing, and even an end to the Tsar's autocracy. Now the normally Tsar, the no. troops would deal with this kind of thing, but as it turns out, soldiers get hungry too, and they were also tired of having to kill their fellow Russians so much. So entire regiments mutinied in the yeah, capital and they joined the crowd as well, trashing symbols of the Tsar and his autocratic regime. Things were escalating yeah, very so quickly. Liberal I was say, it looks like one big collapse now. The war, even with yeah. the war still going on, you know, mm. the people, like, yeah. like you mentioned there, the poverty, the workers and that, they were, they were having to do even more. They were unhappy before. Yeah, they were scrimping and scraping before and now they're being 
No wonder they turned. Shot at, I mean, it's like being invaded by another country. Yeah, right? everybody's so turned. treated, isn't it? I assume even the soldiers are probably on low wages and lack of food. <laughs> if any wages and at all. And like I said, shooting their own people is, well, that couldn't have gone down very well, could it? Nah. Politicians watching the riots in the streets had long been dissatisfied with the Tsar, since he would shut their parliament down any time they did something he didn't like. They believed the only way to bring stability back to the streets was for Nicholas II to abdicate. Mm. The riots continued. The police fired on soldiers. Soldiers fired on soldiers. The workers re-established the Petrograd Soviet. Politicians began arresting the Tsar's ministers. He may have been an autocrat, but he just lost complete control of his capital city. Talk about embarrassing. Nicholas, the troops have turned against us. The people have taken over the city. They've even cut my phone line. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> hmm, the phones are down. Things must be bad. I'd better go back there. Nicholas hopped on the next train back to Petrograd, but he never made it to the city. Oh. His train was met by military generals and other politicians. What's going on? Nicholas, look man, we need to talk. It's not you, it's us. Oh, who am I kidding? No, it's definitely you. <laughs> During the whole crisis in Petrograd, wow. the liberals convinced the generals that if Nicholas abdicated, the people would calm down, and the generals were on board. They didn't have time to quell the chaos, because don't forget, they were still losing a global, all-encompassing war against the Germans. And with the military no longer on his side, Nicholas had no choice but to step Oof. down. Throughout that his entire hurt. reign, he had done everything he could to keep all the power for himself. He was and there quite a while, though. Yeah, 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 definitely. With none. But then there he was had a, a big good long question. life of who would replace Nicholas? Yeah, luxury well, and his son Alexei was next in line. Hey, buddy, daddy couldn't handle the complex socioeconomic problems of a giant multinational, <laughs> multi ethnic empire that's engaged in total war with all of Europe. You think you could give it a shot? Alexei just wasn't ready to be Tsar. Nicholas did have a brother, but given the state of the empire, he wasn't keen either. And so, 300 years <laughs> oh, no. of Romanov rule in Russia just kind of came to an end. The earlier 1905 revolution hadn't changed much, but this new revolution had left Russia without a czar. And still, before the year was over, there would be one more revolution left to come. Nicholas's failure as commander of the armed forces was the final straw that broke the camel's back. Do you think maybe you could have done any better? Well, guess what? It's time to find out. In Rise of <laughs> Hey, Kingdoms. sponsors are Rise of Kingdoms. Rise of Kingdoms. Have you ever heard of Rise of Kingdoms? Free to play, real time strategy. Oh, it games. comes up on Just YouTube in front of adverts quite a bit. Including Rome, China, <laughs> Very annoying. Oh, let's go. I'm going to support. Oversimplified. Yeah. Yeah. Rise of Kingdoms. I do like my strategic oh, games. Get a tap my fly. I do like the strategic games. If you want my advice, yeah. the troop is the most important chess piece in a battle. In Rise of Kingdoms, each troop can be controlled. It's very in a battle, Age of Empire. You need to utilize careful mm -hmm. positioning like through unique troop formations. That's, that's so a good using game. terrain to your Brilliant. advantage. I literally won the Battle of Gogamela with fewer troops by using superior strategy. You're wrong. Joan of Arc? That's right, new. Even just up, doing the, uh, the response bit is quite cleverly done. Is way more you spend some time each actually playing the commander so, has yeah. So we carry on. Look at me. I've added attack and defense buffs to my troops. Whoa. I'm also able to cure my wounded soldiers. Cool. And I can <laughs> cool. increase their wood gathering speed. By Maybe when phones are a bit bigger, the screens cool, are bigger, and I enjoy playing games. In Rising Kingdoms, like, the decision is yours. Now really go ahead, play choose your favorite real historical that. figure, and lead your troops into real-time battle. Download Rise of Kingdoms now for free by clicking on the link in the description below. Yes, you must click Join that link on their page. Other online players and guide your civilization from a lot of players into a great empire. Hmm. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, hungry woman, absolute chaos, and the end of the Tsar. Mm. Oh, hey guys, it says here there's been a revolution, and the reign of the Tsars has ended. Oh, oh then come should on, be happy I missed now, another eh? one? Why am I even in this video? Well, it's not like you could have done anything. As long as there's a world war, you can't get back to Russia. Who wants to start a revolution? <laughs> I mean, a revolution. <laughs> Dang it! Despite getting rid of Nick, Russia was still at war with half of Europe. The Germans, however, had an idea. They thought that if they helped Lenin get back, he would cause trouble for the new Russian government. So they put him on a train. Destination, Petrograd. It was a long journey, and while Lenin was cooped up in his train, things in Russia were changing. Workers were taking control of their factories. Soldiers were socking it to their mean old officers. Without a czar, a big old power vacuum had opened up, and someone needed to fill it. The liberals proposed they be in charge, and they set up the provisional government. The workers, however, had already begun establishing local Soviets, largely controlled by the social revolutionaries and the Mensheviks. And since neither felt like they had the power to oust the other, Russia ended up in a classic dual power conundrum. 
The two coexisted, with the provisional government becoming the official government and the elected Soviets issuing orders to the workers and soldiers. This power balance was delicate, and all it would take is one bold revolutionary to come along. So we've not seen much of Stalin right there. Oh boy, no. <laughs> Lenin's coming home. I can't wait for him to see all the great things we've accomplished, and I'm going to show him my fan art. Oh look, here he comes now. Shut up! Shut up! You all suck! The provisional government sucks, the Soviet sucks, even your fan art sucks! <laughs> Why does he have to be so mean? In case you couldn't tell, Lenin wasn't a fan of everything that had been happening. In his April theses, he called the provisional government and the Soviets a bunch of big bourgeois bozos. <laughs> and he kind of had a plan. There was still a lot for the Russian people to be mad about. The provisional government hadn't got Russia out of the war, the people were still hungry, and the peasants were still hoping yeah, to get more people land. Oh, the that's Soviets hadn't done much to change things either. But even though they weren't perfect, a lot of people did like what the new government had been doing. There was progress. The secret police were disbanded, the death penalty abolished. They even planned to hold elections, meaning for the first time ever, the Russian people could choose their own government. Wow. To many, Lenin seemed like some out-of-touch weirdo. If Lenin wanted to go from whiny irrelevant zero to a hunky communist hero, he'd need to shake things up a bit. So he and the Bolsheviks came up with a hot new slogan that promised Peace to give the fire. people what the provisional government wouldn't. Peace. Don't like war? We'll end it. Land. You want land? We'll give it to you. Bread. Hungry? Scooby Dooby Doo. Lenin also got a back on the side. Of this kind of it might not be that simple. Out there to give and a bit each the place. <laughs> I know it's probably <laughs> not as simple as that, like but slogans. it's clever in a way. Bit, the Bolsheviks became more popular. Some Mensheviks even began switching sides. But even though the people thought Lenin's slogans rocked, as long as the provisional government didn't mess up, they'd continue to support it. So let's check in on the provisional government. <laughs> oh, provisional government. You've made a big mess. Oh, the provisional government lasted for just nine months, but those nine months were chaos. The people wanted Russia out of World War I, but Minister of War Alexander Kerensky thought instead of doing that, why not do the exact opposite? If the people saw more Russian victories, they'd have to support the new government. And that went just about as well as you might expect. These heavy defeats worsened the Russian economy and made the hungry people hungry. Uh. And by now, I think you know what comes next. They trashed the place. More looting, more rioting, more violence. It was like the Tsar had never abdicated. I was just going to say, I thought it was all starting to go so well. Yeah. And then it's just taken a turn for the worse again. Gone. Yeah, almost a revolution. <laughs> a revolution back to the original revolution. Yeah. yeah. And with the Tsar gone now. Like, I always remember, uh, well, well, Stalin was obviously there yeah. around World War II, weren't he? Yeah, so it'd be interesting on, to see yeah. where the next power source comes from. Well, I assume this heads through that, don't I? I hope so. Hopefully, I don't know how far it's going to go through. Tens of thousands of armed workers took to the streets during some of the worst violence Petrograd had seen yet. Oh, and in response, to... Kerensky called in the troops, who I'm opened surprised. fire on yeah. the demonstrators. Yeah. For now, Lenin and other Bolshevik oh, leaders wanted the to streets. distance themselves from the violence, but the crowds marched under Bolshevik slogans, and as a result, Kerensky, now the Prime Minister, took the opportunity to stamp down on the Bolsheviks. Their leaders were arrested, Lenin was accused of being a German agent, and he was forced to flee to Finland in disguise. Wow. This sucks! Now I'll <laughs> never get to have my revolution. Why are you wearing a dress? Uh... It's a disguise, idiot! And it makes me feel pretty. Kerensky had successfully dealt with the violence, but he just couldn't catch a break. This increasing support for more extreme forms of socialism, along with the poor handling of the war, alarmed traditional liberals and bougie business boys. To appease them, Kerensky decided to promote a military legend to supreme commander of the armed forces. Someone who hated the revolution, loved the death penalty, and was devoutly <laughs> anti-socialist. General Kornilov. Hey man, thanks for the promotion. That was real swell of you. Of course, with you by my side, who would dare try to overthrow me? How about me? <laughs> I did not see this coming. Ooh. Unfortunately for Kerensky, Kornilov hated the liberal and socialist reforms of the new government, okay. particularly the dumb socialist soldiers' committees. The army was no place for undisciplined left-wing snowflakes. Fearing a Bolshevik takeover was imminent, Kornilov ordered his men towards Petrograd to oust the Soviet and take over. Kerensky freaked out, and he needed help. <laughs> to Since he had trust yeah. was yeah. in power. organizing, he and other Bolshevik leaders were released, and they, along with the Soviet, organized the defense of Petrograd. Kornilov had the power of soldiers, but the Soviet had the power of workers, and they did what workers do best. Railroad workers diverted Kornilov's men. <laughs> telegraph workers Brilliant. messed with his communications. They even infiltrated his forces and encouraged the demoralized men to desert. They were also armed en masse, but in the end, no fighting was necessary because Kornilov's coup just fell apart and Kornilov was sent straight to prison. Everything was coming up Kerensky. Hey, thanks for the help, boys. Couldn't have done it without you. Now that there's no longer any threat, how about you, uh, return all those guns I gave you? Hmm. 
No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. In order to kill a rat, Kerensky had just given a gun to a bear. Yeah. A bullshit. <laughs> the whole affair was a huge propaganda win for them. They had defended the revolution, and their popularity skyrocketed. They found themselves elected to the Petrograd and Moscow Soviets, with Trotsky even becoming chairman in Petrograd. They were now in a very powerful position, almost powerful enough for Lenin to return home from Finland and finally stage his long-awaited communist revolution. The Bolsheviks began planning their takeover of the Russian government. Some got cold feet and began arguing against Lenin's armed revolution in favor of a more peaceful approach. And they even wrote newspaper articles about it, which kind of gave the whole scheme away. The Bolsheviks are planning an armed revolution? I did not see this coming. Kerensky began arresting Bolsheviks, and as a result, Lenin and the boys felt they had no choice but to commence the revolution right now. Yeah. Lenin was back in Petrograd, but was and still in forced. hiding, so Trotsky yeah, got the ball rolling, using his position as Soviet <laughs> chairman to organize <laughs> the Bolshevik militias. Anyway. Now, what? if you were to ask Soviet artists, the revolution went something like this. As much as they would like you to think it was a glorious, violent, heroic takeover, nah, the truth seems to be a little more underwhelming. The Bolsheviks just kind of walked into key buildings in the city and took control. Bolshevik supporting sailors even brought in a huge battleship, but there wasn't really any fighting. Nobody really tried to stop them. In just one day, they took control of the city. Next, Kerensky just managed to escape before the Bolsheviks surrounded the Winter Palace, placing the provisional government under siege yeah. inside. Is it safe to come out yet? Yeah, I think so. Fear my revolutionary might. Give me that. That night, Lenin came out of hiding to play a bigger role in the revolution. With him back at the helm, they had one more job to do. Storm the Winter Palace and arrest the provisional government. And here comes the final showdown. The palace was defended by a force known as the Battalion of Death. Now that sounds Ooh, lovely. Oh. And just like that, Lenin had won. As far as yeah, violent, bloody revolutionary uprisings go, no, this wasn't really worth it. But Lenin was finally in charge of Russia. He had spent up. his whole life dreaming of this moment. He set up the first council of people's commissars, his own cabinet, with him in charge. This was it. His <laughs> chance to <laughs> finally <laughs> make his communist <laughs> utopia with equality the and freedom for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so Lenin, I did mention that in the comments. So they were planning on cool. holding elections. Shall we go ahead with those? Of course. You can't have a communist utopia without high levels of political participation. The proletariat should be free to we elect lost. who it... What? The social revolutionaries won. We lost. Those don't count. Lenin claimed the elections were unfair, and the constituent assembly they created was counter-revolutionary. He presented the new assembly with a motion that basically said, sign here and give up your power. And when the assembly was like, no, Lenin said, see, they're disobeying me. Prove that sure in the cool. <laughs> Shut it down, boys. Oh. Moderate socialists and others weren't happy when Lenin had the assembly closed by force. And when campaigners began taking to the streets, they were fired upon. For Lenin, setting up a communist utopia was looking suspiciously like setting up a dictatorship. While he was implementing many of the communist policies you'd expect, he was also refusing to work with other political parties and cracking down on opposition. Hey Lenin, are you setting up a dictatorship? I'll shoot you if you are. Of course not. What a crazy Like I say, because it's kind of like heading that way. It's, it's, um, yeah. it's going to be a yeah. massive powerhouse coming along somewhere along the way. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's just total power in it and control. I mean, he must have had so much power even before this, didn't he? Well, because they seemed to like him at the start, didn't they? Yeah. They were like, hey, Lenin's back kind he of He kept it. disappearing, hiding up, but he had... He had so much power to just be able to walk in there and take control like he's... Like you said, the revolution seemed to be like a... Not really working out in the proper way, probably that like it was meant to be working out, I don't know. It's like they've yeah. gone backwards, haven't they? So, at some point, it must go forwards quite quickly. Well, that's it. I mean, I... Mean, I I did hear something where someone told me, I said, you know, revolutions always come round again, so no matter what happens, there's always another one on its way at some point. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm pleased to announce I'm setting up a secret police force to repress and kill traitors. And by traitors, I of course mean anyone not loyal to me. Owie, 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 owie. The assassination oh. attempt made on Lenin's life in August 1918 failed. But in response, oh. the Bolsheviks ramped up their oppression. But while all of this chaos was so erupting back home, kill Lenin and the boys were also distracted by another problem. They were still at war with the Germans, and they had promised to give the people peace. So Lenin made Trotsky commissar for foreign affairs, and sent him off to negotiate a peace deal with light. the Germans. The Germans offered Trotsky really harsh terms, you know, because they were winning the war. They demanded Russia give up a butt-ton of land, something that would be devastating to the economy. Look, I know it's not great, but I think we have to accept it. Are you insane? This will ruin us! Hey Trotsky, you got a big brain. What do you think? How about no war, no peace? 
What's that, Mr. Trotsky, sir? It's simple. No war means we'll stop fighting the Germans, but no peace means we won't sign the peace treaty either. Then, when the Germans see we've just stopped fighting, they'll have to leave us alone or something. Trotsky? That's genius. <laughs> I could kiss you. Do you want me to kiss you? Stop asking <laughs> me that. Trotsky's Yeah, no you want the first thing in this, because well, he was the one that was dressed in the uh, women's clothing, weren't he, earlier? Yeah, I don't know if that's just to be a silly. Joke. Yeah, it could, it could so. be silly. It could be another yeah. one. It might be something in that. No peace plan was a huge success. Oh, wait, no, just kidding. It went exactly as you'd imagine. When the Germans saw the Russians had stopped they fighting, on. they slammed 700,000 troops uh. deep into Russian territory with no resistance. Now, the new peace treaty offered by the Germans Even was harsh, worse, yeah. with Russia Ooh. losing a huge amount of territory, oh, oh, oh. population, and resources. The Bolsheviks had no choice but to accept, and Russia was humiliated. That, that's horrendous. With Petrograd now in yeah. an exposed position, Lenin moved the capital to Moscow, just in case. Oh, Things that's how it happened. And many, many people were extremely unhappy with the Bolshevik government and its actions. Lenin, you've pissed off so many people that they've united against you. We're under attack. Relax, we always expected some counter-revolutionary pushback. I think we can handle a few angry Monopoly men. But Lenin, it's not just the Monopoly men. Okay, who are we up against? Well, the liberals, the social revolutionaries, national separatists in Poland, Finland, and the Ukraine, independent warlords setting up chiefdoms, anarchist rebels, the, Great Peasant Armies, the Cossacks, the Caucasian states, the Baltic states, the British, the French, the Americans, oh, and the, British, the Japanese. Oh, the and Russian Russian Czechos, the Vacuum soldiers seem to have taken over the Trans-Siberian Railway and stolen all the Imperial gold reserves. What? How could this get any huh. worse? Oh, and it says here your mother-in-law is coming to stay. <laughs> no! Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, icing on the cake, right there. United together to topple Lenin's government, and Russia descended into a full-blown civil war. Now, the Russian civil war was extremely intricate and would really need its own video. But essentially, the anti-Bolshevik. Hey, yeah, you know where his next video is going. And he's going to the civil war with Russia. While the probably. Bolshevik Reds controlled the industrial heartland. Using this to their advantage, along with the surprising military genius of Trotsky and the shocking disorganization of the White Army, the fortified Red Army gradually came out on top. It was an absolutely brutal conflict, with both sides committing horrendous atrocities. Mm. To maintain order at home, the Bolsheviks began the Red Terror, and the secret police would execute tens of thousands of suspected traitors. Really? No one was, was safe from the violence, not even Nicholas himself. You've probably been wondering what Nicholas yeah, was doing yeah, this whole time. Well, after his abdication, he and his family were placed under house oh. arrest. At first, they were allowed to live in their usual luxury, but after Lenin took over, their conditions worsened. Wow. The Bolsheviks were just holding on to Nick until they could work out what to do with him, but the Civil War complicated things. The last thing they wanted was for Nick to be freed by the White Arms, <laughs> and so, to stop this from happening, Nicholas's Bolshevik guards decided to act. It's not entirely certain whether Lenin ordered it, or if the guards were acting on their own volition. But on July 17th, 1918, with no. white armies approaching, they woke Nicholas and his family in the middle of the night and brought them into the basement. There, a drunken squad of Bolsheviks murdered the entire family. Oh my word, that wow. is, that's shocking, ain't it? Mm. That, that kind of reminds me of what yeah. happened in World War II. I remember there was like some <clears throat> hierarchy, so to speak, commanders there yeah. working alongside Hitler. And there was even families there that were that like not just gutted about the fact that Germany were losing World War Two. they were like uh, yeah they were just yeah. embarrassed so they would literally drug or kill their own family and kill themselves after I was like for, 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 seriously go in there and kill the family uh, yeah exactly I mean I know he didn't do very well um, he was pretty horrible himself but there's ways of doing it and that's to me is like being the bad person killing a bad person you've got to do it the right way yeah the it's, whole family the, yeah that's what I mean that, that's Totally wrong, and that's I don't I don't that's uh, awful, isn't it? That's not surprising, though, unfortunately. Nicholas, the last czar, once one of the most powerful men alive, had met a brutal end. But after he years was scared, of fighting, he would suddenly become back in power. Trotsky and his red army came he, out I don't victorious. Think would have been back in power, wow. That was a close. They, yeah, they were okay. worried he back would to be a communist utopia. How why don't they have some sort of? Well, the Civil yeah. War helped create it's a like massive royalty famine royalty when he was able to just start back it. into it. As massive inflation and the ruble is worthless, hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of railway track have been destroyed, disease and epidemics have killed three million, the population of Moscow and Petrograd has collapsed, life expectancy has plummeted, sailors in Kronstadt are rebelling, people are freezing to death in their own apartments, and life has been reduced to a constant search for food and shelter. Whoa. Well, this just means I'll have to work twice as hard, day and night, to save the country. Nothing will stop me, short of a couple of sudden strokes. <laughs>
Get the doctor. One thing you have to keep in mind is that everything I've been talking about, the civil war, the assassination attempt, and Lenin's struggle to maintain control at home, were all happening around the same time. And it must have been extremely stressful. Lenin began getting headaches, insomnia, and in 1922, he suffered two separate strokes. Wow. As the Soviet Union was officially declared under a strict one-party system, Lenin's health continued to decline, and his Looks ability to lead the Communist Party went with it. Yeah. 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 Trotsky would yeah. succeed him. He was a great speaker, he'd won the Civil War, and he had a dope-ass train. The last person anyone expected to take over Stalin! Was Stalin. He's back. Stalin wasn't a great intellectual like Lenin, <laughs> or less. a charismatic war hero like Trotsky. He was, as one Menshevik described him, a great blur. Someone who operated in the background. Someone who you might not even notice. But it was in the background that Stalin would rise huh. to power. Here's how it happened. After the revolution, all the Bolsheviks hoped to get a cool job in the new government. What did you get? Commissar for war. Sweet. What'd you get? Secretary. <laughs> Stalin was made general secretary for the Communist Party. It wasn't what he wanted, but Stalin quickly realized that even though it wasn't fancy, it was a powerful position. As secretary, he had the power to give people jobs within the party. So he would give jobs to all of his pals, who in turn would give him their support. The more pals he gave jobs, the more, power he got, the more power he got, the more pals he got. Lenin may have been having wall-to-wall -wall strokes, but he was still involved in the party, and he was taking notice. He wasn't a fan of Stalin abusing his position, or insulting his wife to her face. Lenin knew he couldn't let Stalin Stalin take over, but by this stage, he was just too sick to fight it. Hey man, tell whoever's in charge of giving people jobs not to let that jerk Stalin become the next leader. By the way, who did I put in charge of giving people jobs? That would Stalin. be Stalin, <laughs> sir. Oh, uh, he's gone. Well, deja vu. Lenin's last wish was to not let Stalin take over, but by the time he died, Stalin was too powerful to remove. He had his remaining opponents arrested or oh, killed. Oh, Trotsky oh. was banished and fled to Europe. Eventually, he would be assassinated by Soviet spies in 1940. Oh. Our dear comrade Lenin has died. We should have a state funeral. No. Let's mummify him and put him on display so people can look at his dead body forever. That's <laughs> gross. You're gross. Guards, uh. kill him. Lenin had waited so long to take control in Russia, but he never got to see his communist utopia. His short time in charge was spent dealing with the destroyed Russian economy. Power does for people. Seems to I, know little, the world I know he was a little. I know I heard he was a little bit corrupt. But he but, really oh. did seem to believe communism would make Russia a better place. Stalin, on the other hand, would take the Soviet Union down a different path. If you thought Lenin How was many a tyrant, lives have well, they all taken? he's scary. Power, eh? A secret police state, a rapidly militarizing superpower led by a paranoid man who deeply distrusted the West, would see the world come to the brink of nuclear annihilation. That's right. I'm talking about. The Cold War. Cold War, yeah, we kind of have one then right now. Going back, I do believe that is going to be the end of our episode. So, no, I, I remember watching the Netflix and Color series. And okay. I then learned how massive Russia were in helping decide the outcome of World War II. And a lot of that yeah. was down to, obviously, Stalin. He was, mm. he was in control back then. I know people will say, oh, yeah, God bless America and Winston Churchill and that. But Russia had a monumental effect on that. That thing I would say about him is... Boy, was he powerful. Uh, people were really scared. If anyone was scared of anyone, mm. they'd be scared of Stalin. That's how it came across yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had that yeah. look and all, didn't he? Well, he had the power, didn't he? And the secret police and everything else to, to do, and the, the army having I mean, to do what he wanted. And people had very little to fight back with, did they really? I mean, unless they wanted to start another revolution. And I can remember when we did a bit on, like, World War II, it was the deaths of them, wasn't it? And, the huge numbers, and I didn't realise why, but that's explained there why, because they didn't try and fight back, so many of the, the Germans had their lives taken. Yeah. Be you don't think because the soldiers were told, no, we're not fighting because that way they can't attack. Yeah, we can have peace, but then but, the peace never came. And then oh, that, that, the amount of land that they took after that, yeah. that was huge, wasn't it? It was, it was yeah. Small numbers. Because Germany doesn't go right across there anymore, does it, like that? So well, no. they must have lost it. That was an interesting one as well, saying, oh, we went to St. Petersburg, well, yeah. I forgot what they called it, but then, then they moved the capital yeah. to Moscow. That was an interesting point, mm. clever move. Oh, you wouldn't want to lose your capital, would you, <laughs> to another country? Go on, no. so that was, that's, now you know why Moscow is as big as it is today, because mm. would it have been as big? Probably not. It still would have been big, don't be wrong, but the oh, capital wow. wouldn't have been there had yeah, that not happened. That's it's an just, interesting just one. just a known thing, Moscow is the capital, isn't it? It's just, you, it wouldn't have been, so. 
would have been very mm. strange. Uh, let us know your thoughts Strange. on uh, the, uh, the Russian, they said French, the Russian Revolution <laughs> over simplified part two in the comments below. As like with our part one, you were great with many, yeah. many of you were great with your comments, giving extra feedback in there. So we do read them. So yeah, by all means, whack it down below. We look forward to reading them. Um, if you're still here, thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Catch you on the flip side.